The Bible says in Matthew chapter 22 from verse 39, it says, And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. The question is, do you really love yourself? How do you treat yourself? What do you tell yourself when no one is watching? Do you look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself the most wonderful and most the sweetest words to yourself? Do you see yourself as the best out there? Do you see yourself as the one who is very, very valuable to his or her community? Because when you truly love yourself, that is the only way you can give out love. So the question is, how much do you love yourself? Because when God said that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself, it's because the intention of what God was trying to pass across is that if you don't love yourself, there's no way you can love your neighbor. So it means that when you want to show love to your neighbor, that love will reflect who you are. So when that love does not reflect who you are, it means you don't have love. Have you ever seen a situation whereby we say, we want to send somebody for a five-star hotel for a holiday. We want everybody to donate money to make contribution for us to send this person to an holiday in five-star hotel. There are people that will say, I have not taken myself to holiday. I have never been to five-star hotel. So why should I make contribution for someone else to go to holiday? For someone else to go and stay, have fun in five-star hotel? When I have never been to five-star hotel, when I have never been to holiday, you can think and say, oh, this person is weak and no, the person is speaking the truth. They have never given themselves the best because they don't love themselves. And we're not asking them to not give to somebody what they have not given to their own self. So they will not want to play part in that contribution. Because you are demanding from them what they have not given to their own self. So the question is, do you really love yourself? God wants you to start looking after yourself. God wants you to start taking care of yourself. God wants you to start loving yourself. God wants you to start giving yourself the best which will help you translate it and then affect it to your neighbor, to the people around you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when you don't have love, you can't give what you don't have. You can only give what you have. Hallelujah. Amen. How do I know that God loves me? How do I know that God really loves me? But then you can then see from his character through the word of God that the Bible said, For God so loved the world, and then he gave his only begotten son. So, in other words, that alone tells you that God loves you so much, and because he loves you so much, the only thing that he had, he had to sacrifice it for your redemption. So, if he can give his only begotten son for you to be saved. That shows that he loves you. So when you look at the world today, you find out that people are not happy. When you look at the world today, you see that people are becoming more selfish. When you look at the world today, people are becoming more evil. When you look at the world today, people are not becoming more self-centered. And the question you must ask yourself and say why? It is because there is no more law in our society anymore. People are not looking up what they can get from you rather than what they can give to you. Many years ago, people used to show love even from nothing. From nothing, 
people will still show love. But look at the world we are today. Everybody is on a fast track. Everybody just want to want to make it at the expenses of the next person. Everybody want to pull one down for them to go up. Because there is no more love in our society. You see, many years ago in Africa, we didn't really have time with our parents. We didn't really have fellowship with them. Maybe most people do, but the majority didn't really have fellowship with their parents. Your parents, all is for you to do what they expect you to do. And yet, even when many of the people travel out without relationship with their father, without their father ever telling them, daughter, I love you. Son, I love you. Some children grow up without hearing, I love you from their mother. Some children grow up without hearing, I love you from their father. Some children grow up without having a hug from their father. Some people grow up without having a mother, a, a hug from their mother. And yet, when they made it in life, they still realize this is my mother. They still went back to look after that woman who never said to them, I love you. And when you question the mother and say, Mommy, you never, you never tell me that you love me. Your mom will ask you, Well, I cannot tell you that I love you. Who paid your school fees? Who gave you food that you eat? Who buy you Christmas clothes? Who bought you sugar? They are not going to tell you, I love you. They believe that what they have done for you is enough for you to know that they love you. Yeah, you will take a child to all the holiday that is out there. Yeah, you will be with them at home morning till night. Yeah, you will tell them, Mommy, love you, say to Mommy, you love me. Mommy, love you, say to Mommy, you love me. Oh, you are not telling Mommy that you love me, say that I love you. You will say all these things. That child will still grow up. I remember you that way. One time you smacked me on my bum when I was growing up, I will never forgive you. The child will not say to people who go everywhere, oh, my mom, I'm not talking to my mom because when I was growing up, my mom was very harsh. My mom slapped me on my butt. My mom said, he will never say to the people, I was very stubborn when I was growing up. I break all the glass in the house. I throw away everything. I never listen to all what their mom did because the generation is only looking for something that we use to reject their parents. Looking for something that we use to reject their neighbor. Looking for something that will say, the reason why I cannot help my neighbor because no one helped me. Every PD generation are looking for something they can hold to see it as an evidence why they cannot be a good child, why they cannot be a good person to the society. That when you love yourself, when you see someone is going through challenges, you see yourself in their challenges. When you see people are going through pain, you see yourself in their pains. When you see people going, their home is shaking, you see yourself in their pains. When people are telling you what life is doing to them, you see yourself in their pain. Because you feel like even though you are not going what they are going through. That because you love yourself, you know that I don't want to be in that pain. I don't want to be in that shoe. I don't want to be in that situation. Because you don't want to be, you can feel it what they are going through. You will sympathize with them. You will understand with them. You will feel with them. Because you love yourself. You know that if I'm going through what this brother is going through, I don't think I will survive. If I go through what this sister is going through, I don't think I will survive. But we are in a generation. You tell people what you are going through. They turn around and say, ah, don't mind her. She's just looking for, uh, she's just looking for whom to talk to. Me, I have so many things to do. I'm very busy. She's talking, she's complaining. It's not only two children she has. Me, I have four. She's complaining. Who is supposed to be complaining for each other? It's not me or she. People are looking for reasons to talk down. And as a result of that, people have now built guides around their life. They don't know whom to talk to anymore. They are not in their pain alone. Before, usually, sharing your pain is a way of releasing yourself. Sharing what you are going through is a way of releasing yourself. Not because 
you think that person can help you. You just want that person to just give you listening in here so that you just pour out your heart. After you just after pouring out your pouring out your pouring out your you feel relieved. Today, you will share your problem. They will use that problem to move. In fact, whoever you share that problem with, pray you don't have problem with that person. Because that problem you share will come back to haunt you. How can we show love to people? The only way you can show love to people and show genuine love and show organic love is when you love yourself. When you love yourself, you'll be able to show organic love to your neighbor. If you don't love yourself, you can't love your children. If you don't love yourself, you can't love your partner. If you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. If you don't love yourself, you cannot love your community. If you don't love yourself, no matter the love you are showing out there, no matter the love you show to your children, no matter the love you show to your husband, no matter the love you show to your wife, no matter the love you show to your community, for the fact that you don't love yourself, that love is a fake. True love will reflect who you are. True love, organic love reflects who you are. When the Bible said, do unto men what you have them do unto you, it did come from the standpoint of love. You want people to treat you very nice because you feel you are very special. You love yourself so much. You don't want anybody to hurt you. You want to be you want people to treat you very nice. You want people to love you and treat you with respect because you love yourself this much. You go out there. You start treating people with respect. You stop hurting people because you are then doing to people what you will have them do unto you. It still come from the standpoint of love. The message is that love yourself. The only way you can treat your husband, your partner, your children, the only way you can show them love is because you love yourself. Many of you mothers, you are giving your children the best today. Why are you doing that? The reason you are giving them the best is because you look back to when you were growing up, you were not opportune. Your parents could not give you this best. And you love yourself so much. Say, ah, I wish my parents did this to me. Oh, but since they were not able to do it, I will do it for my children. It's a standpoint from love. You cannot say, oh, you know, when I was growing up, my mother did not give me chicken. So none of my children will eat chicken. It's because you hate yourself. Hey, when I was growing up, my mother did not take me to holiday. So I'm not taking my children to holiday. It's because you hate yourself. When I was growing up, nobody gave me present. So Jeff, I'm not going to give anybody present. It's because you hate yourself. That was why there was one post. There's one post you can see on social media. A lot of people are posting. So it's women that mostly post it. They will say that the, the man that I want don't want me. So therefore, the person that wants me will not get me. Let us suffer together. When I saw that post, can people be this daft? So because what you want, you can't get it. So whoever wants you cannot have you. So instead, let everybody suffer together. That is what is from the standpoint of person, self-hatred. Self-hatred. So which means what we are not trying to say is that if nobody loves me, so whoever loves me will suffer. So nobody loves me, so whoever loves me will suffer. No. Life shouldn't be so. Look after yourself. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Give yourself the best. Even if the Bible says love your neighbor as you love yourself. The truth is, if you don't love yourself, you can't give what you don't have. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't give what you don't have. the best. See yourself as the best. 
Look after yourself. 